There was this AV versatile T thing has been going for years in, in the professional AV world. Um, it's now much a, a given that, that the two are in, you know, interchangeable and so on. Um, but there, there is a sort of, not, not a, well, I wouldn't say antagonism, but a sort of uneasy relationship sometimes between the two. You've not found that in your, in your sort of area, have you? Uh, no, we, we've generally found that uh, we've managed to merge the AV and the IT contracts together. The, the conflict, I think, is, uh, is largely removed in, in as much as the, the contractors are taking on both disciplines and bringing it under one roof, which I think has its benefits for sure. Um, it certainly uh, removes the, uh, the confusion over lines of responsibility. Um, and I guess it's, it, from a long-term service point of view, it's a one-stop call for the client. You know, if something happens with the AV, which is predominantly driven by IT, as we as we now know, that's the way the industry is going. It's a lot easier to manage. Uh, it's a lot easier to change things as well if it's going to to one person as opposed to many. Um, and I think the, perhaps the, the there's a bit of discrepancy in that if it's a large corporation and they've got their IT systems in the background, well, they're sometimes they are quite different to the IT systems you expect and they need managing in a different way to IT systems driving the AV. So the, the, I guess you've got to define what the, what the IT is doing in the first place and then work out how that fits into to the AV. It's sort of working out the power of the client in a way, isn't yes. it? Because we always maintain that IT should be subservient to yeah. the business in a sense. It should be there as a, a sort of confident bedrock yes. supporting whatever important application we're trying to do. But so often it, it almost seems to take precedence and importance over what should be doing, so IT tends to tell the business yes. what it should be doing rather than the other way around. I've always thought in AV we could sort of avoid that somewhat because it's in that very application-driven environment. Well, I guess it, it also depends on, on the importance that's being put on IT and or AV. And, uh, you know, in a corporate world, it's, it's not so, uh, what's the word, it, it's not so much of an emotional attachment to the AV. It's a case of, as, as we discussed today, it's a bunch of screens, it's a bunch of cabling, it might be a, a few speakers and a few bits of gizmos and gadgets here and there. Whereas if a client is, is wanting to be a, a, the latest and greatest, if they want to show off the, their AV prowess within their offices or in their commercial space, and residential for that matter, you know, the, the completely different emphasis is put onto that, uh, and therefore it becomes more important. So yes, yeah, it, it, it's not always IT on top, quite often it's AV. It seems residential where the experience is key and uppermost. I think the clear is that there's an like infrastructure element of there, importantly. But in, in, in the corporate AV environment, it, it's very much componentry yes. and seen to be componentry. Now we're looking at this Internet of Things thing, which is splitting up the infrastructure and the front end, the experience to the person using it, yes. which is what all residential is about. It's just about that experience. And I think we should be more experienced there at the moment. Actually, you think, well, this is the ultimate aim than anything else. There should obviously be very strong technical understanding of what the infrastructure can do and how it should perform. Yes. But ultimately, you know, AV is all about delivering that front end and interaction that's delivering the benefit of what is in the infrastructure to the client of the front end, which is what residential is about. Yes. You know. yes. So we can learn for perhaps from that process a bit, I don't know. Yes, I think so. I think so. Um, I, from a point of view of, um, uh, from an integration point of view, you, you know, it's, we're seeing now more commercial grade IT systems going into the large houses. And if you think of an office block, you might have 10, 20, maybe hundreds uh, or possibly even thousands of rooms. Mm. Um, you, you know, and some of the projects that we're working on now, you might have large freeholds that have, you know, could be up to, well, we did one recently that was 30,000 square feet that was 100 and, I think it was 154 rooms of, of AV. So yeah, the requirement there is, is not just a, a you know, bog standard, yeah, dare I say it, net gear or uh, out of the box uh, solution for, for IT. It needs a commercial grade, fully managed, fully set up, fully supported, um, and therefore fully understood by the AV contractor to actually implement that. And again, that goes back to my first point about uh, how in the residential world, it's very much, um, it's very much taken care of as part of the AV package rather than split off into separate disciplines. I was going to say, so is the residential space changing then into what is a, a low end? Not, well, it's not even a low end, is it? It's a professional pro AV, what we consider to be pro AV. Residential, we assume, is just a bit of a cinema room or on a couple of blinds up and down. But you yes. know, we, we, at another end, it's really like a pro V environment, really. Well, yes, absolutely. I mean, it's very difficult to draw the line now, isn't it? It is, and, and I think in some cases clients expect an extension of their office and, and vice versa. You know, they expect an extension of their, 
their home setting, their flat, their apartment, wherever they are in the world. Mm. Um, so it, it is all IP, you know, it is managed uh, desk space and office space uh, within each apartment, within each, each location. There's so. probably more personal ownership of that space as well, is there? You know, Absolutely. we end up diluting the big environment, corporate environment. And actually, it's more we use more aggressively and monitored more in a more personal way yeah. in a residential. So it's like a, a microcosm of a business environment, but having much more contact and much more personal experience with it. Yes, and and with that brings its challenges. You know, you have to sometimes it's a case of uh, not necessarily buoying the client up to to see what's available because they're coming to you with a whole load of solutions and ideas before you even sat down. So you're having to interpret this, and and this is the same of clients. It's the same of uh, project management teams. It's the same of whoever's whoever is instructing and guiding the AV. Um, you know, you have to try and moderate what they want. And um, we have a saying: just because you should doesn't mean uh, sorry. Just because you could doesn't mean that you should. Uh, and quite often we're having discussions where ideas come out of the woodwork, which are, uh, sound great, um, you know, they sound wonderful. I always give an anecdote about a Rolls Royce uh, a team meeting we had where the uh, architect was saying, oh, we've got the wonderful idea of, of, of being able to spark up the gas fire from the back of the Rolls Royce uh, using the client's iPhone. And, and I would argue the point, well, yes, that is possible, but uh, why would the client want to do that? Uh, you know, what, what, what perceived benefit is there? If they're, they're not able to enjoy the fireplace that they're sitting in front of, because they're not, they're in the back of the car, then why automate that, that process to enable that to happen? Uh, similarly, with running the bath, uh, this was another one that he came up with where uh, the automation of the bath was again back of the Rolls Royce. He painted a picture of a, of a gentleman sitting in the back deciding that he's 10 minutes from the house and he's going to run his own bath. Well, you've got to automate the, uh, the water turning on, you've got to automate the water turning off, you've got to then stop the overflow happening. And of course, in London traffic, you're going to be delayed inevitably, so how do you keep it warm? So what you then have is an aesthetic beautiful Italian bath that cost £20,000 that's being ruined by a whole load of unsightly technology and, and gubbins going into and around it just to satisfy this one element that somebody came up with as an idea. Yeah, it sounds and like it, an extreme example. It's the same in, in, in pressure business. You know, it's, but it, uh, is what you need really necessary and how you should plan for it. I absolutely. mean, probably in a very extreme form in a residential. Yes. You can easily see the importance of it, but it's more starkly seen in a residential than it could probably be. Absolutely. But still, nevertheless, quite important. Yeah. How do you manage expectations? <laughs> it's very difficult. Uh, it can be. And I guess it's, uh, it, you know, it's f for, all the, uh, for all the ideas and the, uh, the expectation that a client has, uh, I think on balance we find that budgets determine you know, what is possible. And yeah, some, some clients will spend an, uh, a dis disproportionate amount of money on AV, uh, you know, millions and millions uh, on a single dwelling, and certainly a yacht, uh, which is a market that we also uh, get involved with. Um, and others are, in fact, their, their mindsets are changing a little bit. So the last few projects we've seen in and around this neighbourhood in, in Mayfair um, have started to almost buck the trend and, and go back a bit in terms of technology and technological sort of advancement. So standard light switching, you know, which for, for most is sort of pretty much unheard of now. Um, you know, we've got clients who are saying, we don't want anything automated. We don't want automated coffee machines. We don't want automated this. We just want to be able to come in and do the fundamentals, which is turn the lights on and off. We want to be able to perhaps have some sort of security. And we want to watch Sky News or the football or, or ArabSat or, or you know, whatever, whatever takes their fancy. Um, so it's, there's that element of it, but then also you've got to cater for when the client changes their mind. And this comes back to the infrastructure and, and certainly IT, which supports that, where the client decides, oh, no, actually, I do want all singing, all dancing. I do want, uh, you know, I do want certain things automated or I want additional screens here or additional screens there. So you have to try and, you have to try and second guess what they're thinking and, and plan ahead for, for sort of more eventualities than perhaps you first consider.